Well, Andrew, thank you so much for helping my project. Um, could you say a little bit about yourself? For sure. So uh, my name is Andrew Rose. I'm a soon to be former Spartan flight controller for the International Space Station and also MPO for the Lunar Gateway program. Um, and yeah, worked at NASA for a little over four years, um, but I'm moving back to Michigan uh, in the next couple of days. So yeah, excited to talk to you today. Um, that's awesome. So what got you into uh, the space program? So when I was a kid, I don't know exactly what, well, I went to the, the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago and they had a whole space exhibit. I got to go into the astronaut suit and take a little picture and all that. And I just thought it was so cool, man. You know, the, the spirit of exploration and just what it can mean to communities and just like inspiring the nation and things like that. So that really excited me. Uh, when I got to college, I was playing college football and kind of got away from space for a while. Um, and then I was procrastinating in uh, the library. Well, it should have been working, but my buddy's like, hey, you should come to this meeting for something called the Aerospace Enterprise. We do really cool stuff on small satellites. And I was like, that sounds way better than this project I'm supposed to be doing. So went there and kind of reignited my uh, passion for space flights. Um, and then that landed me a few internships. And then <clears throat> at the age of 23, got my, my dream job right out of college uh, working here. So it's been a, a dream come true for sure. And, um... I guess, when did you find out that we we're planning to send people back to the moon? That's a good question. So I had been following NASA since, really since I was a child going to the, that museum. Um, and so I knew about the Constellation programs, things like that. I was disappointed when it got canceled. Uh, I would say I knew that there were like projects and work. I knew about the Orion spacecraft. Uh, but when I first got to NASA, that's really when Jim Bryanstein and 2024 really like solidified. And it was, that was the first time it felt like it was really real to me. I always knew that there were plans to go to Mars and to the moon and, and all of that. Uh, and that had shifted over my lifetime, but it was always kind of like paper versus uh, when I started working here in 2019, that was the first time it really felt like solidified and like that it was actually achievable. That's uh, when I started this project, December of uh, 2019. There you go. Yeah. Uh, 1,840 <laughs> days to the end of 2024. <laughs> That's, uh... There you go. Right on. Um, so your family and friends, they know that we're going back to the moon? Yes. I'm sure they're sick of me talking about it. <laughs> but uh, I do like to share this with as many people as I can. And just like space in general, like I said, I think it's very inspiring and very cool. Um, and so I try to share with the people I love. Uh, what surprised you that most of the people that I go up to, like randomly at coffee shops, at fishing piers, who are taking a smoke break, waiting for the bus, that I would say only about 20% of them know that we're going back to the moon? Sadly, it does not surprise me. I, uh, being from the Midwest, I'm from Wisconsin, um, I would say a lot of times when I'm back home and I'm talking to random people and they're like, I'm like, oh, what do you do? And work in the paper mills or uh, whatever. And that's what I do. And I'm like, oh, I work in mission control for the National Space Station. And they're like, International Space Station, what is that? And so I think that in general, uh, people want new things and want exciting things. And, and going to the moon is something we've done before. And it kind of doesn't get the credit it deserves um, in that sense with social media. And there's so much overstimulation of other things that come our way uh, in general. So. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me, but it does bum me out because I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the media landscape in 1969, you know, uh, three uh, nationwide uh, channels, uh, you know, maybe one or two newspapers in every city. Uh, if you got into all those media, everybody would know about it. But right. and it wasn't, did. and it wasn't so like nowadays media is so like the headlines, you know, like they want to grab your attention and stuff. And it's just like science and, and the reality of it is much cooler in my opinion, but it doesn't have that same like, uh, yeah, catchy headlines and things like that. So, um, When you think about where it might be leading to like 200 years out, um, what do you see for humanity in like 200 years? Uh, that is a great question. Um, where do I see? Uh, yeah. <laughs> where do I see humanity in uh, 200 years? Uh, that's what I, I love about this industry, honestly, and working in it, and why I'm excited to continue working in it, is I don't know what jobs will be out there. People ask, what, what are my career goals? And I, I don't even know five years from now what kind of jobs will be in the industry. And things just change so fast. I mean, I hope by 200 years from now, hum humans are spread throughout the solar system. I, I hope we'll learn to take better care of where we're from and where we're going. Um, 
and that we utilize the resources we find throughout the solar system to uh, to better the lives of everybody that we can. Um, so I, I think it's a super exciting time in this industry. So you think we have people on like Mars and the moon and the moons of Jupiter and Saturn and maybe... I hope so. We're farther. It's been almost uh, just a little more time from the <clears throat> first flight of the Wright brothers to Apollo, from Apollo to now. And you never know when that thing's going to accelerate, right? Like thing, computing technology is what like, kind of accelerated with Apollo and it really changed everything. And <clears throat> you never know what's going to be the next big change. Maybe it's artificial intelligence. Maybe it's some new way of designing spacecrafts. Um, maybe it's the, the cis-lunar economy. But all those things could really trigger a, a huge jump forward in terms of space exploration. And if you could, if somebody offered you a trip to space today, would you take it? 100%. And uh, if you could, how far would you go? Now that is a trickier question. Um, I would want to always come back. <laughs> I would go to Mars if I, uh, if the plan was to come back. I don't think I could go at this point in my life. Go like live in a colony on Mars with that being the majority of my life, or, or where I would end up um, spending all my life. But I would definitely go there for uh, a year or two. Now, I think the target audience for these videos are people that haven't even been born yet to kind of look on what I think is a transformational decade with spaceflight. And uh, anything that you think you'd like those future generations to know? Wow, that is a big question. Uh, for the future generations, I'll say that uh, I hope humanity figures it out. Uh, I think there's a lot of as a species, we're, we're still pretty young uh, and there's a lot for us to learn, but I, I do think everyone is trying their best and I hope we learn quick enough to uh, navigate the obstacles in front of us and uh, ensure y'all's future as well as our own. Well, thank you, Andrew. I really appreciate your yeah. time. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, future generations.